Marty Levinson, my friend, it's Scott Lee Cohn, and I want you to know, while I'm cutting the waste and corruption in Illinois, I'm going to be doing it with you in mind. Hi, everyone. I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Edward Scissorhands has nothing on me. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Hi there, I'm the real Marty Levinson, and thank you all for listening to the Northtown News Magazine with Sonny Hirsch, our cameraman, and the greatest host around. Thank you, Marty. Ivy Myers, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the web at www.ntnm.org. Um, you can find all our shows on YouTube from the last six years. Uh, we're getting close to a quarter of a million watched. The counter finally started working again on YouTube. We only tried for two years. We were doing 1,750 shows a week. All of a sudden, we see two and 300. It was like making me nuts. But now the counter, thank God, is starting to move in, in, in the right directions. And, you know, we're, we're getting the watches back. They, we, we, they probably shorted us out of close to 100,000 shows over those two years. But whatever. Um, I'm not getting money off YouTube anyway. So <laughs> we're real big on community policing, caps24.org. And uh, Sonny is the chairman of the District Advisory Council of the 24th District in his spare time. Also runs Court Watch. And uh, we had Anita Alvarez here today, which will be on a different show. And, um, you know, we discussed the importance of those things. And that's a show you might want to check out. In any event, one of my favorite people in the political world. So actually, I had two of my four today. It's like I had Anita Alvarez on. By the way, the other two I really like are uh, Terry O'Brien. And, and I do like Jesse White. Um, but it is my pleasure to introduce you to number four on the list, even though he's not running for anything currently. But people need to realize that this guy has a good heart. Everybody that knows him knows it. And he's always looking to do good. And um, he is not bought and paid for by other interests. That's one of the things I like about Anita, by the way, because Anita actually, her husband financed the campaign for her. Mm -hmm. So she didn't have to go raise money. And that is um, and I, uh, Scott Lee Cohn. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> nice to be here, Sonny. How are you? First of all, my pleasure. And, and you're right. I'm not a politician yet. I'm not running for anything. Yeah. Um, that's not to say that I'm not going to. Yeah. Um, we'll just have to see how it unfolds. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Now, you actually, you know, one, one thing I want to mention before I forget is you started a new venture. You're in the laundromat business now. Oh, I've been <laughs> in that. That's a year and a half old. Uh, I actually started a couple more businesses since then. Cool. But the, the, the laundromat is the best business in the world. Everything smells good. Everything is clean. <laughs> It, it, it's a phenomenal business. Rags to riches, I like the name too. <laughs> it's actually right on California and Lawrence. One day you should go in there. That's my father's, by the way, my father used to have his business at Lawrence and Central Park. Did he really? So, yeah. What did he do? Well, he basically, we would call, I like to call him a wholesaler. He liked to call oh, himself okay, a salesman. Okay. But he was more of a, a jobber. His main line was, he, it was, he had it open to the public when it was a Jewish neighborhood for a while. But basically, he sold things like sunglasses okay. and pens and pencils. He sold them to, to, to drug stores and school supply stores. Sure. I mean, I got my muscles early on. I used to pack orders for him. And he, he sold locks, you know, to the school supply okay. store. I, I don't mean the kind you put on a bagel. No, no. I, right, I mean right, the heavy right, metal right, things. You can't so, eat those. You have a problem. So anyway, yeah, I was, I was busy schlepping 45-pound boxes of batteries That's why you got all these muscles now. It, it helps. That's right. One thing I'll tell you, I found out I found out real early in life, house. Even though my father didn't look it, he was strong as an ox because he was doing that stuff all sure. the time. Sure, absolutely. It's uh, you know, exercise, mm. and, and we talked about this earlier. Mm. Got to get out there. You got to do things. You got to build up your body. Very important. It's absolutely important very longevity. important. Yes, yeah. it is. No question about it. So, what are we talking about today? We're we talking about politics. Well, you know what? For one thing, you've got a, you've got a, you. I figure you've got interesting insights into the state of Illinois. And we are in, and by the way, we don't talk in advance about what we we're going to talk no, about. No, we don't. It's, I, it's I never off the do. cuff. And the truth is that I never even gave it any thought. I just figured we'll talk about something. 
So I, I never we, have any trouble talking we, we to you. We can talk about our education system that's all messed up. And, you know, I, I was reading something from uh, tax, uh, Illinois Tax Accountability. Yeah. Um, uh, Jim Tobin's place. I don't know if you know who he is. I think I get there. Well, first of all, I'm on everybody's PR list, yeah, so okay. I probably get the emails. Yeah, we're talking about the cost of uh, administrative fees to, to run these schools. I mean, they're running at 75, 80% administrative fees. You know, it's, it's no wonder that these kids are failing. The money is going for principals and assistant principals, superintendents. It's not getting put back into the system for the kids. You know, it's funny. I was, and I, I wasn't going to bring this up on air, but I was telling you before about one of my favorite places, Tulsa or Shiva, where my well, father I, went. I, 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 I just wanted to make a quick point okay. to you. There were, there were two seminaries in Chicago. Shiva's like a Jewish seminary. What, this, the one, one place, and I don't want to say their name, had about 50 students. 10 administrators and about four or five secretaries. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us he had two and a half administrators and two part-time secretaries and they had over 200 kids. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah and you just said something that, that hit home with me. You didn't really want to talk about it on air. Somebody needs to put their foot down and say, listen, the schools aren't running right. We need to consolidate schools and eliminate these administrative jobs uh, and, and, and get these kids learning because they're our future. You know, you're right. And, you know, even throwing money at the problem doesn't always work. Like Washington, D.C., they spend a gigantic amount of money per student, and the product of their schools are some of the worst in the entire nation. Well, the, the question is they spent money on, uh, uh, for education. Did it go to student education or did it go to administrative It went to fees? administration, building facilities, it's and all a problem. that stuff. The fact of the matter is, you know what? A good school, like the grammar school I went to, mm -hmm. there was a principal, there was not an assistant principal, Absolutely. and there was a secretary in the office, mm -hmm. and we had about 200 kids. Right. Well, if I was governor, that would be one of the things that I would do, is I would, I would form some sort of committee to start consolidating schools and eliminating some of these uh, jobs. Not the teachers. Teachers yeah. are very important. Teachers are the most important. Very important. I would rather, I would rather overlooked. Take that, I would rather take that money and put it into teacher salaries. Yeah, absolutely. And you get the best teachers. And the fact is, you know what? You don't need 20 administrators bringing down federal guidelines absolutely. For, for, for silly books that have no... Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you know what? I'm sure that somewhere down the road I'll get uh, some heat from the teachers' union. But again, somebody's got to stand up and put their foot well, down. Well, actually, the it's teachers' not working. union should be in favor of it because we're all in favor of paying the teachers. Right. We're just not in favor of paying the administrators. Right. right. <laughs> Assistant principals. It's ridiculous. But, you know, you take that principle and you apply it to the state because we have a lot of waste of money going to state salaries. We Look, look at the pension. Look at how... No it, kidding. Yeah. It's so upside down. And again, if I was governor today, yeah. I would say, you know what? There'll be no more pensions starting today forward. We would go to uh, Social Security. We would go to a 401k. Um, th this is perpetuating itself. I mean, year after year, uh, there's a bigger deficit because nobody has the balls to stand up and say, enough is enough. Yeah, I tell you, I don't get this guy Quinn at all. He, he just makes me want to, you know, it's not just Quinn. It's, uh, we, we've got to it's include Quinn. the entire... Uh, right. The, you know, the process, the, but, but the, the legislators. We raised the income tax in the state 67%. Correct. And wait, wait, I stood in front of the people, yeah. and I said if we elect Pat Quinn, he's going to raise taxes, and it's going to drive people out of this state. And it, it's exactly what it's exactly doing. Exactly what happened. I, you know, in an earlier interview, I had somebody actually question whether he really should be in the state of Illinois anymore oh. because I, it's he, just not a good business environment. He, along with the legislators, are driving people, uh, residents out of the state. They're driving businesses out of the state. Uh, I'm sure you hear it every day. Doctors can't practice here anymore because malpractice is too right. expensive. They're going to Indiana. They're going to Wisconsin. They're going to the bordering states. Um, and what's happening? It, it's, it's, it's killing Illinois' economy. Absolutely. And, you know, you've got businesses locating in Wisconsin and Indiana. And then they raise the taxes on all the other things to make up for right. the lost income. But it, it, it's a reverse cycle because people will just cross the border. Absolutely. You know, for instance, there's certain, well, you know, I don't want to bring up a specific product, but, you know, like I, I've got a friend that goes to, uh, that works out in Bensonville, which is outside of Cook County. For cigarettes. Yeah. For gas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All that stuff. Just, say, tell it how it is. I mean, listen, I'm a smoker. 
Yeah. And I will not buy my cigarettes in Cook County. It's, it's a waste because, of money. It's a waste of money. Well, it's a, it, listen, it's a bad habit. I, mm. I need to quit smoking. But, but the point is, the point I'm making, we have got to stop raising taxes. We've got to stop penalizing these businesses for trying to, to, to do business and, and make a living. Um, you know, I have a lot of property in Decatur. I had a lot of property in Decatur. Yeah. Um, and as time went on, the municipality was finding different ways to, to fine me and penalize me. If, if the grass was growing, I got a $450 fine. You know what I did? Yeah. I'm selling my properties. I'm pulling out of Decatur. Um, we have got to find progressive ways to bring revenue into the state, and it's not raising taxes. It's not working. It's just the opposite. When Texas dropped their uh, income tax, mm -hmm. they actually got more business, and they're actually generating more revenue mm -hmm. than when they had a state. There's about 10 states now without an income tax, and Bobby Jindal um, yeah, down and, and south. other states are following suit because they're all competing for, for the business now. Yeah, and they're raising, they're raising additional <coughs> revenue and putting people to work. Right. And you've got too many people here that are out of work. I mean, I hate to think what the interest alone is on that ninety-six, on that ninety-six billion dollars in back pensions, and that might be a, sh a short figure. Not to mention the fact that I think seven times during the Quinn administration, the bond rating has been lower. Lowered, right? And the state of Illinois actually has a lower bond rating than some third world countries. Well, you know what? We're not paying our bills. Um, there, and I say there, the legislators are spending money in all the wrong places. We need, the, as a successful businessman, I've always spent money to what either advertise, um, but the point I'm making is I spent money to increase my business. Right. Um, the state of Illinois is spending money and they're not getting anything back for it. It's going, again, administrative salaries, pensions. I, I, I don't want people to think that, you know, being a Democrat, I'm against the unions because. I believe that there needs to be representation, but there needs to be responsible representation. Um, you know, the, the average government worker makes more than the average person in private industry, and then they have well, a magnificent pension on top. I've got a buddy who's worked for the Park District for 11 years, and he's got a terrific pension for 11 years. And, and, and you know what, if I was governor, I couldn't take away what's already been given, but I sure as hell can say, listen, this is it, it starts with me, there are no more pensions. Yeah. Social Security. And uh, again, I say if I'm governor, and, and hopefully one day I, I would like to run, and hopefully the people will elect me. I'm but, voting but for you. I'm endorsing you. <laughs> let me say this, though, Abby. Sure. For decades, we have had um, lawyers and Harvard graduates and, and very uh, book smart people as governors and legislators trying to run the state and the country. Yeah. It ain't working. No, nope, it ain't. You know what? It ain't. Is, <laughs> I said that on purpose. But the point <laughs> I'm making is maybe we need to take somebody who's a successful businessman and let him try, uh, whether it's a me or another successful businessman. But, but we have to break the pattern that we've been in for decades. It's, you know, that's exactly right. And that's one of the reasons I was so supportive of Terry O'Brien's candidacy, because he actually does run a successful business. Mm -hmm. And he understands... You know, people don't understand if, if you're not, you, you know, you're in business. I've, I've been in business too. You're, you're better at it than I am, that's for sure. But the fact of the matter is, if you, you, you've got to generate income and you just can't spend money you don't have. Right. If, you, if you were to take a look at, at the national budget right now and reduce it, and these are not the, all, the, the, all the numbers going around in email are not necessarily right, but basically <coughs> if you reduced it in, in human terms, um, the government spends three three trillion eight hundred billion dollars a year they take in two trillion four hundred billion dollars mm -hmm. and they have a debt of six a sixteen point four or five probably five by now trillion dollars so put that in in in, in real terms you're make you're making twenty four thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. you're spending thirty eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars and you're hundred and sixty five thousand dollars in debt that, right that's exactly right you know i what? mean that's you know kerfush you're, you're upside down <laughs> right and, and unfortunately, the state is doing it every day. Listen, if, if I know that I have $100, yeah. I can't spend more than $100. Once that $100 is gone, it's gone. The state's attitude is, well, we have $100, we're going to spend 400 
And how are we going to make up the $300 deficit? We're going to raise taxes. We're going to penalize the businesses. We're going to install or implement more fees and fines. You know what else chaps my ass? Yeah. These red light cameras. Oh, I'm you know with what? you. <laughs> I got to tell you, again, I know it's home rule and a lot of municipalities, you know, w would have their own say so. But if I was governor, these red light cameras would, would be gone. It's a cheap way of bringing revenue into the municipalities, and it's bullshit. It's not only that, but, you know, it penalizes people beyond belief. And, you know, like right now with, with, um, with, with uh, our, our idiot mayor, well, he's not an idiot, he's brilliant, but I don't like him. Um, there, there have these I, I, new I cameras and I, speed I, zones. I, I got to interrupt you for yeah, a second. Sure. You talk about the mayor. You remember his 100-day plan? He put out that big pamphlet? Yeah. Okay. Well, I swear, I swear to you, Avi, this is the truth. I looked at that. Wow. Do you know whose ideas those were? If you go back and you look at my campaign, yeah. which was way before he was running, a lot of them were my ideas. But you also didn't have an idea to put a speed, to speed camera by Warren Park. That's, that's the new thing. And they have speed zones now, mm -hmm. with parks and schools. As but, if um, having crossing guards out and having all the bumps near schools isn't enough. Um, if you, but now when you go down the 6500 block of Western Avenue, mm -hmm. Uh, during certain hours, if you go faster than 20, if you go 25 miles an hour, it's a $50 ticket. Mm -hmm. If you go 30 miles an hour, it's a $100 ticket. Okay, see, at schools and parks, uh, I can't say I disagree with that. Maybe there needs to be oh, a but, speed camera. One thing there. I'll explain to you Warren Park is not a situation where P kids are really crossing the street okay, to go to the park you. or anything. And there is a stoplight right there. Mm -hmm. So it's not like there isn't. And at Devon and Western, there's a red light camera. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, basically, well, that's it. there's you a big parking light camera, people. you got a speed yeah. camera. You know what? You're invading my privacy, and I don't like it. And also, you know, people, well, the, the red light camera, I mind on so many scores, but I tell you, the speed camera, Western Avenue is a busy commercial street. Mm -hmm. And if every, it's making everybody take, and, and they're going to put them all over the city. It's going to make everybody take longer to get where they're, they're going. Not. Pardon? Not if I'm governor, they're not. I would, I'm voting for you. I don't have a problem that way. Um, two minute warning. <laughs> two minute warning, huh? Um, well, you know, again, I, I, I am not saying I'm running for anything right now, private sector, enjoying my private life, enjoying my life with my wife uh, and our children, um, but whether I run or not, there needs to be a change in leadership. We need to stop electing these career politicians. Let's elect a couple of successful businessmen. Let them try. Yeah, I agree. I, that's the way government needs to be run 100%. You know, it, it is a business. It, it's a business one way or another. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm not against the idea. I think payroll, it's a wonderful income, idea to, expenses. to do this thing and to do that thing and do the other thing and benefit the community. But if you don't have the money and you can't afford it, you're putting the burden on the children and grandchildren and future generations. When the federal government's paying $300 billion a year in interest, I mean, you could actually do a little bit of good with that $300 billion if you weren't paying it out in interest. That's correct. But it, it all goes back to wasteful spending, needless spending, uh, bad management, and bad leaders. 100% correct. And I'm proud to say I didn't vote for any of the guys in office in the state of Illinois. Well, not, not Quinn and not uh, what's-his-face. I, and, I uh, hope <laughs> that, that we will change that and you will be proud of the people you vote for and elect uh, in the next statewide cycle. I sure hope so, and that would be really nice. I want to thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Um, Scott thank, Lee Cohn. Thank the viewers for watching me, listening to me, and, and you know, I, I would love to hear from them at my website or at my email, scottleecohn.com uh, or scottleecohn at gmail.com. Scottleecohn at gmail.com. Yeah, Anything, I've got to you know, send any my comments, <laughs> uh, let, them, let them contact me. And that's uh, L-E-E, -E. he's not Chinese. Correct, L-E-E, -E. <laughs> scottleecohn.com. <laughs> Scott Lee Cohn at gmail.com, either one. That sounds great. I want to thank you so much for being here, Scott. And, it was my pleasure. Uh, I want to wish you many successful endeavors in the future. Thank you. And I hope I'll get to vote for you and see you on top of the ticket as a winner. Thank you very much, Avi. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Be well.